Hi everyone, Ariel with Ariel Paints. Today I am going to do a video about Pro Air makeup. So I'm going to use the dips and the solid palettes. Those are the two products that I've used from Pro Air. And I apologize for the lack of makeup and the semi-dirty hair because I'm going to paint my face for the first time with Pro Air products. I've been painting my arm now for a few weeks and testing it out in my pool and underwater and in the shower just to get a feel for them and see how they react and learn how to use them myself. And ever since I posted that first video, maybe three weeks ago now, I am getting flooded with messages and requests on Instagram and Facebook to do a video for you guys. So I am no expert. I'm still learning, but I have done quite a bit of research. I've, I've read all the content on Pro Air's site. So I'm going to share with you what I know so far, what I figured out, and then we can paint a butterfly together and hopefully I do a good job, we'll see. Um, I will tell you that if you want more detailed information on the Pro Air products that I'm showing you, go to their website. They do have a lot of descriptive text explaining how you're supposed to use each individual product and what it's actually made for, as well as they have a video gallery with lots of different videos. Now, I haven't even had the time to watch all of the videos on their site, so I, I don't know how detailed they are, um, but I'm going to make a video for you guys. And I needed to paint a butterfly today for the inspiration to paint group anyways. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to do a video for you. So as I get into it, I'm looking at all my stuff here and what I want to talk to you guys about. So first, I want to tell you guys about the products I have. I have the dips from Pro Air, which are these guys in the little containers. They are a liquid makeup. And... They are kind of in between watery and thick. They're like a thicker consistency, like really watered down acrylic, I guess I would call them. So these can be used individually or you can put multiple dots of them on a plate or in a container and you can load them as a one stroke. Now on the website for Pro Air, they do say that the dips are made for line work and detailed work. They were not intended to be used for backgrounds. I have seen people load sponges with them. I haven't done that and so far don't have the intention of doing that, but we'll see, um, that can always change. I have also seen where people take the dips and then another product from Pro Air called Hybrid. Now the Hybrid Paint, it is my understanding that those are used for airbrushing. So I've heard that mixing the dips and the Hybrid Paint together create a nice consistency. Some people think dips are too thick. I haven't had that issue yet. I don't know why, I just don't think they're too thick. I think they're fine. Um, but if you do, you can get the hybrid, which are also different tones of colors. So you can also make more custom colors. Um, I don't own any of those, so I have no experience with that at all. But I would suggest that if you're interested in that, do some research on it and see what you can find. So anyways, these are the dips. I have all the primary colors, black and white with the dips so far. Now I've also invested in some of the palettes of the solid paint. So I want to show you what I have of those. I have the primary palette in the solids. I have the thriller palette, which is, try to hold this up. I call it the zombie palette because it's got like a zombie on the front. Um, and I just purchased the Neon Solids, which I haven't even tried yet. They just came yesterday. So excited to try them and really curious if they'll have like a good pigment. So I'll, I'll put them in this video somewhere. Um, neons, you never know. Sometimes they're great under black light, but they don't show up so well in daylight or uh, regular light. So we'll see. And then I also got the tropical palette because I really wanted some more colors. I have also gotten, I should say, since I started posting photos of 
the waterproof paints, a lot of inquiries from clients about pool parties, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, so I do have a pool party coming up and I've been playing around with these a lot so that I'm able to paint the kids and accommodate requests. And I'm really excited. You know, like anything, when you're working with a different medium, it just takes some time to understand how that paint reacts and how to use that paint. So it is absolutely something you can learn to do. I will say it's not necessarily easy. So you have to practice and kind of plan out how you're going to use it. Um, now the Pro Air Dips are already a liquid paint, so they don't need to be activated by anything, but you can't rinse out a brush in water because they're water resistant, right? So you need to have alcohol in order to reactivate the paint or to really clean out a brush. Uh, Pro Air site recommends 91% or higher alcohol, which you can get at any pharmacy, Walgreens, I'm sure. Um, I think you can even order it off like Amazon if you wanted to. So that's something you need to be aware of. Um, also having a separate set of brushes, which I'm grabbing my separate set of brushes, is really, really helpful because since you can't rinse them out, having some designated brushes for your Pro Air and waterproof paints is going to make your life really easy. Um, if you wanna have enough brushes to have a designated color per dip you're using or per solid, I think that would be helpful, but you could need a lot of brushes to do that. So I personally so far have just had some alcohol handy so that I could rinse out my brushes. Now I am using the Paint Pal um, Silly Farm brush set for this, and then I grabbed one of my acrylic brushes because I need another liner. So this is my set so far of what I've been using and what I will use today um, for all of my waterproof paints. They've worked out really well. Now even though these are you know, paints that can only be used with alcohol and you can't really rinse them out in water, you can clean them. So I have cleaned this after using it with coconut oil and some liquid soap and it's perfect. I could use this with my regular face paint, no problem. So that was encouraging that I could clean them. I was really nervous and still get a little nervous and I've never painted my face with this stuff. So I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, and I will talk about ways to remove it as well. So anyways, you're going to need alcohol. I would use alcohol um, and have that handy no matter what. Now the dips, or I'm sorry, the solids are a little different. You can see this is not liquid paint. This is a solid block of paint. They are quite hard and they are very dry. So you do need the Pro Air Pro Long. Yeah, that's what they call it. Pro Air Pro Long. So the activating solution for the solids. Now there is no like ingredient list on this. I can tell you that it smells like alcohol, but from the information I have read on Pro Air's site, there has to be something else in this or it's omitting something because they do say that with the solids to get the best results, you need to have the Prolong activation solution. And if you use 91% alcohol or higher, whatever alcohol you have, you're going to get a more diluted result. I did try this last weekend with the Prolong and the alcohol, and it is true. The alcohol does not activate it in the same way as the Prolong. Um, again, there's no activation like ingredient list in here, so I don't know exactly what they are either putting in here or omitting to make that happen, but that is the case. So, um, that being said, you're also going to want, I've got my computer here, I'm going to get it off my lap. You're also going to want some kind of container for your dips. I've seen people use just like a throwaway paper plate. I have this container from, I think it's from the container store that I've been 
just mixing in. Um, this is not that shallow, but the shallower the better because that way you can get a brush in it. So you can, again, do a few dollops of different colors in here and create a one stroke. That's one way. I also did a little bit of an experiment because I just wanted to and I was curious if it would work. So I took some of my dips and I went ahead and I made one strokes out of them and let it dry. Now this was not easy at all um, and it did work but I used you can see like some of them ra like ran really badly, so that's white, pink, and red. Um, I used a lot of paint, you know, or a lot of product, a lot of liquid product in order to do this for my little experiment. Um, so that was probably not the best use of my product, um, but I am glad I tried it. And I will say there's one Instagram post in particular where I used this and I'll link it or put a box up above so you guys can see it while I'm talking about about it um, that used this pink and purple and white mix and it actually worked really well and it looked really really nice so I'm still kind of playing around with these I made quite a few like a blue one and then like a big rainbow that I thought maybe I could play around with a sponge and see if it worked I haven't gotten around to that anyways still playing around with this it's a total experiment, so we'll see if I really like it or if I'll continue doing it. I'll maybe show you guys a swatch of this too. Here's like a yellow and red one that I did. Um, I don't know. In the end, I think it's like a good thought, but I don't know if it's the best use of the paint. So anyways, I'm going to get started, and I'm going to go ahead and paint a butterfly and do the best I can to make it beautiful. And as I go, if there's anything else that I left out, I will absolutely let you guys know. And again, please visit ProAir's site, contact them with questions. I will answer anything that I can, but really I'm still learning and doing this video for you guys because so many of you begged me to do it. So I hope it's helpful and let's go ahead and get started and hopefully I'll create a beautiful butterfly for you guys. Okay, so you guys know how much I love a one-stroke butterfly, so I think I am going to try to use my little one-stroke creation here and a, this should be about a three-quarter inch Silly Farm Artie Brush. It's the Artie Brush Large, and I dipped it in alcohol, and then I went ahead and I loaded it up just the same way I would load up a one-stroke. It's already getting dry. So this paint is so different than anything I've ever worked with. Um, I think I need to work quickly, so I'm just gonna stop talking and I'm gonna paint and hopefully this works out, so wish me luck. Okay, so that's working out pretty well. Um, you can adjust it and go over it a little bit. You can see I didn't like that it was down a little too low, so I kind of made that corner a little higher. Um, my symmetry is a little off too, which is always kind of off when I'm painting myself. The brush and the paint do dry out very quickly, so you have to move pretty quickly and you can absolutely like fill in with the heel just the way you would when you're normally painting a butterfly. Drag the tip in to recreate those lines. I mean it's working pretty well and it's pretty. Now I, as you can see, I stopped here because I have no intention of going over kids' eyes with waterproof paint, nor do I want to go over my own, because removing waterproof paint is so different, as you can imagine, than removing water-activated paint. So after all the paints I did on my arm, um, 
I know that it's more difficult. I would not want to scrub my own eyes that vigorously to get paint off and would never want a parent to do that to their child. So as I finish the bottom of the butterfly, I'm going to talk a little bit about ways to remove the paint. I'm going to keep dipping into my alcohol and loading my brush and I'm doing that really consistently here to get this nice bright color. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. So I'm being really slow and careful on myself, but I could do that really quickly at a party. So that makes me feel good. Um, I am not worried about that at all. So to remove this paint, you can use a liquid soap which I personally do not think works very well, at least the liquid soap that I have in my kitchen does not work very well. Or you can use coconut oil or other oils as well. And so far, coconut oil has worked out the absolute best for me and has removed the paint very well. Um, and I did try, I think the first time I did it, I tried the liquid soap in my bathroom and in my kitchen and it just didn't work. So since you're also working with alcohol, I should not be talking and doing this at the same time. <laughs> um, if you got really close to the eyes, you could it could sting the eyes too. Like I can smell it as I'm painting myself and I can't really feel it burning my eyes, but if I got really close to my eye, I would be concerned. So I don't want to do that on a little kid. I mean, I think this is probably pushing it a little bit. I would not get any closer than that. So I've done it you know, the butterfly pretty much on the perimeter of the eye. Um, you could probably fill in like just a little bit here, but I'm going to fill in with probably my powders. Yeah, so I think I'll do that, add some glitter. Maybe I'll do like a rainbow to show you guys what that looks like and some double dip flowers. Um, so, so far I have used just the Pro Air dips, but in the solid uh, split cake that I made. And I really do like the way it looks. I wish I had a better method of making this because it was tedious and not that much fun. Um, but I'm already starting to hit pan on it because it took a lot of product just to make that one, one stroke. Okay, so that rainbow was created with the one stroke that I made. I just laid my brush down right over the red, yellow, and blue. And there is no green, so the blue and the yellow, of course, made the green, which was my intention, and it worked. Um, that was just kind of one pass. It's not dull, but it's certainly not super bright. So I wonder if I go over it again if I can get it to brighten up a little bit. Let's see. Eh, I don't think it's any brighter. Um, you know, a lot of these colors are like a tiny bit dull. Um, Especially because we're so used to, I'm going to try to clean up that purple. We're, you can barely see it on the edge there. We're so used to our face paint, our regular water activated paint being so incredibly bright um, that this is definitely a change. But when you consider the fact that it's waterproof, it's pretty amazing. So... You know, it's kind of like a trade-off 
to be able to do like a waterproof party. Um, your paint might just be a little bit duller. So I do think that that's kind of going to be where um, maybe I just muddied it up like a tiny bit by messing with it. So I'm going to stop messing with it. All right, so now I want to do some double dip flowers. You can do this in a few different ways. You can do the solids the same way you would your water activated face paint. Um, they do mix well. You can see this is my primary palette and you can probably see how dirty it is because I have been mixing them together. I have done one strokes with the um, one inch or three quarter inch brush as well. So I've loaded it completely with white and then I've taken just the corner of it and dipped it in the solids to create a brush with half white, half blue. Let's go ahead and do double dipped flowers with the solids. I'm going to start with my white like I always do with double dipped flowers and I've got the pretty petal brush here and just like I do with my double dipped flowers with my water activated paint really going to work that in. I think I'll try, what color should I do? Turquoise? There's a pretty teal in the new palette I got, so um, before this gets too dry, I'm going to go over to the teal and give that a couple drops and start working that in. We'll see how this goes. Normally I would dip then the very, very tip into black, but I just don't think I'm gonna have time. I think it's all gonna dry up on me. So that was the teal from the Tropical Palette. All right, here we go. So that's pretty. I'm gonna cascade them up just a little bit if I can my brush is getting a little fluffy here a little fluffier than I'd like I don't know if that's the brush or the paint but it's a little hard to control do one more I basically don't have any paint left on my brush so it's gone so I'm gonna have to reload it to get those last petals back up to to speed um, let's see um, again does not help that I'm talking but when you are doing this on the job move fast. Maybe just don't talk to anybody. Put some headphones in. Just kidding. Don't do that. I would love to be able to do that on the job though. Okay. So you could always do petals in the corner of the eye too, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut my losses with the petals. I want to do some accents. Um, and then I do want to use the dips a little bit. So I'm going to use my small arty brush and I think I'll do just like a quick little stroke with dips to show you how you can do the one stroke with the um, liquid paints. Okay, so you also have to shake these. If you can see how this is separated, I have heard and seen people say that the white separates the most so you do have to shake them. So I'm going to give this a really, really good shake. And then I'm going to go ahead and shake my yellow while I'm at it. I'm going to do some white. I'll try to keep it flat. Hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm going to do yellow. And then I'm going to do just a tiny little touch of the blue because I don't want too much. 
So this is the same way you would do one stroke painting with acrylics um, or other mediums and see it's very drippy. I'm talking and I shouldn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and dip my brush and pull and load that color and I'm just going to dip the edge until I get the color that I want. That's pretty good. All right, so let's try this. It's not bad. Gives it some character. And it did what I wanted. It turned kind of a teal color. So let's do a stroke at the bottom. I'm kind of dipping the edge, dragging it through the yellow, and then dipping the very, very end, pulling it through to get the combination that I want. And then I can, oh, how about I get in the camera for you guys? And then I can just do a little accent stroke go ahead and mimic it on the other side go over it if you want let's do another little one yeah that's not bad not bad for waterproof paint. Um, so that's pretty easy, but again, you're leaving like paint behind, which I hate. These are expensive too, so you know, I hate leaving paint behind. Now, what you do leave behind can be reactivated. I think, you know, one stroke combinations like that would be really hard to reactivate with the 91% alcohol, but your solids in here could be reactivated. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to finish this off with some detailed line work and I'm going to probably add some glitter and some powders and then I'm going to jump in the pool, of course, and show you guys what it looks like. So let's finish this up and I will show you guys the end result. Okay, so check out the neon pink. You see that? It's really pretty. So that's really nice. I haven't tried them all yet, but um, the neon's not too translucent. So that's great. Very exciting. The neon yellow is pretty. My dots are kind of absorbing in, so I'm going over them because I want it to be really bright, but they're drying a little duller than I would like. The neon pink is quite pretty, and of course, it's meant for UV, so you know, I can't be too critical, but I love the bright colors, so I want it to be bright all the time. Um, but I'm sure it's great under black light, which will be a different video, so don't ask, okay? Ugh, I love neon yellow and turquoise. Regardless, it's so pretty. So because this paint is very expensive and very hard to work with, I would absolutely charge more for a party um, when you're doing a waterproof pool party. How much more is up to you. You're going to have to decide that for yourself. But it's just like a completely different level of skill <laughs> that it's going to take to do this. So make sure you are charging more. 
So I'm going to fill in with some star blends. Star blends are not waterproof, nor is any powder makeup that I know of, I guess, is completely waterproof. But it's going to last a little bit longer and hopefully not smear as much. And it's a good way to have the finished butterfly like in here instead of that harsh edge. I'm just going to take the pink star blends and brush it in. So this way for pictures, everybody looks nice and pretty. And then once they jump in the pool, whatever is remaining, you know, is just going to be kind of like, wow, it's amazing. It's still there. So if this wears like a little bit, I don't really think it's going to matter much. So I'm just lightly putting the powder on, making sure to tap it off and filling in. And you can see I'm not even going to the inside corner of the eye. I'm just blending it right out into the butterfly just to blur the edges. That's all I'm doing. Just blurring the edges a little bit. Go over my super dark eyebrows while I'm at it. Okay, so of course you could get elaborate and you could line all of this and make it pop but in all honesty would I ever do that at a pool party probably not unless there were only like four kids and I had an hour to paint them all um so I would be very cautious as to what you decide to do because you'll regret it um one of the reasons I've been practicing with these so much is because I want to have designs in my arsenal so that I am prepared and that I have practiced those designs so I've practiced a unicorn I've practiced um, my princess crown, I've practiced some flowers, um, and now a butterfly. I intend to practice, you know, Batman and any of the other, like, probably a snake. I'm not too worried about doing a snake, that kind of stuff. But of course, you want to make sure you have some things down so that when the kid asks you, you can do it because there's nothing worse than not knowing how to paint something on the spot, especially when it doesn't come off with water. You cannot grab your wipes and just take this off. So be cautious and practice. I'm going to pick out some glitter to add and I luckily have a whole shelf of glitter over here. So hang on and I'm going to find one that I think would complement this very, very well. Okay, so now the real test. I'm gonna go hop in the pool. Hopefully it's not too cold out there today. And then I will be back um, to not only show you guys what that looks like, but that I'm gonna show you guys the removal of this on my own face as well. So stay tuned, there's more to come. Okay, I'm back. I went for a quick swim and everything held up pretty well. That was definitely the weirdest thing that I've ever filmed in my life. And if you can tell by the footage, probably I do not open my eyes underwater or when I get out of water, like I'm the little kid that still like has to rub their eyes. So that was so hard for me trying to open my eyes. <laughs> um, I would definitely say to kids, try not to rub at it because the places I did rub started to pull it off, um, which didn't happen often on my arm when I was doing tests, but I did it quite a few times. So maybe the pressure of it came off. Um, the pain on my hand didn't. So I'm not sure why it started to rub off a little bit. I will and would suggest that you highly encourage kids that if they want it to last all day to do tattoos on their arms and legs and that kind of stuff um, because you know in the pool you're gonna do this and wipe your eyes so I would try to keep it outside of the eye area as always 
and just kind of talk to the kids about that. I did lose my glitter, not too surprised. I also, again, was going like this on my eyes. Um, and there's probably maybe a stronger glitter glue. I don't know, that's more water resistant. I could look into that. Or if you are curious to have that, you can probably look into it as well. Of all the things, my melted matte lipstick held up really nicely. That's the Too Faced Melted Matte that I have used forever now and I'm just in love with it. I also keep this in my kit and this is what I use on little kids at parties anyways. So really excited about that holding up so nicely. Um, overall, I think it looks really, really good for waterproof paint. I mean, I don't think you can get better than this. So I'm very happy with them. I give them two thumbs up. Totally love them. So excited to be able to do pool parties. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So I have organic coconut oil that I have been using. I can't remember what the other oils are that people said work. I asked on Instagram at one point because when I first did this, I couldn't get it off and I was so confused. So again, I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but um, they say to use liquid soap and it didn't work for me. Now I know one of the reasons it didn't work for me is because I took water and liquid soap and like lathered it up and put it on my design. Well, this paint is water resistant paint. So if you are trying to remove it with any combination of water and something else, it is not going to work. So what I should have done is taken the liquid soap alone and started to work it into my design. I've seen people remove it that way and it works. My liquid soap, which is like Dawn dish soap, it doesn't take it off. Like it almost doesn't break it down at all. So if you guys use this or if you know of a soap that does, please comment down below and tell people because mine doesn't. Now what I did figure out because of somebody lovely on Instagram who helped me and told me is that coconut oil so works really, really well. Okay, so I have a dollop of it in my hand and it's already starting to melt. And hopefully I am going to uh, delicately show you guys how to remove this and it won't look too like hideously weird. Um, so again, totally melting just with the warmth of my hand. And I'm gonna start rubbing this on. Now this is one of the reasons why, one, I would not do this on very little kids. I would suggest like an arm design. Um, and two, I would not get too close to the eyes because this doesn't just come off. You know, if this was water activated paint, by now it would be smeared everywhere because it'd be reactivated and being pushed around. You really, really have to work at this paint to get it off. So you want to rub it like a stain and you want to really work that coconut oil or that liquid soap into the design to get it to start to move. Now this is great because this means it's really gonna last for the kids, right? It's going to stand up through the pool party and through pictures and them jumping on the bounce houses. You can absolutely use this on really, really hot days too at festivals and stuff so that those sweaty kids that have like the dripping bounce house sweat um, don't have their designs run all over them. I would just be really cautious of how and when you use it because it's expensive. But anyways, so by the time the end of the day rolls around, and they've worn off just a little bit of their design, it should be about that easy to remove. So you can see, my camera will focus, focus. I've got it pretty much worked out, but there's a few spots sticking. So I went ahead and I brought a cloth into my studio with me. I'm gonna wipe off my hands, and instead of grabbing water, because again, I don't want water, I'm going to use pressure and I'm gonna pull the paint off of me. So I'm gonna do the same on the top and you can see what's left over from that first run. Now the reason why I say be careful who you do this on is because would you wanna do that on a 
two-year-old kid? No, and I don't want parents to do that because I wouldn't want to do that as a parent. So just stand your ground and don't put this on little, little kids. Also, when you are booking those pool parties, make sure to warn them what it takes to remove the waterproof paint. You can even offer, um, I'm going to grab a little bit more and I'm going to work out the rest of this. You can even offer a little care kit if you want. It could be a great way to make extra money and provide another service for your clients. So have a little, you know, care card with some coconut oil in it or something to that effect so that the clients know and are able to tell their guests how to remove the paint because you do not want people going home and trying to scrub this with water and not understanding how to get it off. Um, that is not good for business. Okay, so this last little bit is probably going to take just a little bit more effort. Now, if I was doing this in my shower by now, I would have already grabbed my like exfoliating scrub and just exfoliated my skin and it would be gone. But since you're probably not going to do that to a little kid, let's just keep working it in. You can see I'm like kind of scraping it with my nails. Again, not something I would do with a child, but there you go. So it doesn't really kind of seem like the rest of that is going to budge right now. And that's okay because this is where we're going to do one more pass with our oil. While I'm at it, I might as well do this little spot to get that starting to break down. And that's exactly what you're doing. I mean, this is an alcohol-based paint. So you are breaking down that alcohol base with something that is agitating it. Um, so I imagine you could try a lot of different liquid soaps and different oils, and there's going to be different things that work and something that you might prefer. Coconut oil is something that I have. It works. See that little bit of pressure took that off above my eyebrow? eyebrow and I like that it leaves my skin feeling soft so it's a nice moisturizer too okay so you can see I have it off but I look red and it's because I just had to like work that off of my skin I mean it's not easy now I don't want that to discourage you but I want you to understand that it's not water activated paint so just be prepared so I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it was helpful for everyone who kept asking me. Um, I do think I made this video like a little premature. You know, in a year from now, I do think I'm going to have so much more experience and be able to tell you so many more ways that you can use this and good tips and tricks. So please bear with me. But for everyone who was asking me, I really did want to post something for you. So I hope this is helpful. If you have used Pro Air products for a long time and you are a seasoned face painter with great advice, please leave it down below. I need your help. People watching my videos need your help. So please tell us what you have found to be useful, things that are not useful. <laughs> Maybe I did something wrong that I don't know about. Please tell me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you liked this video and I will see you next time. Mwah.